goodness for my life. For about three years now, I, I've been having malaria and typhoid. Initially, I thought it was due to change of environment, but it persisted. Almost every month, I had to take either malaria medication or both malaria and typhoid medication. But last week, I started feeling the symptoms again. And I said, again, this time I won't take anything. I refused to take any drug. And I was engaging in prayers and fasting. On Monday, I was here during the trumpet service. When the bishop was ministering at the feet washing period, I said to God that after this feet washing, the malaria and typhoid will disappear, and I won't see it again. Lo and behold, after the feet washing, a few hours later, the symptoms started going down gradually. As I'm talking to you, I can't feel the symptoms anymore. I've come to return all the glory to God. Hallelujah. That same God will heal you tonight. In the name of Jesus. It's my new dawn era. I'm Sudar Sarah Yakub. And I've come to say thank you, Jesus, for seeing me through, for his faithfulness. I started my IT and I finished it Friday last week successfully without any problem. And on Monday this week, God added a year into my year. So I've come to say thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm Betty MacAndrew. I return like that one leper to say thank you, Jesus, for perfecting my health. Um, I was diagnosed of typhoid. Then I was doing my IT, so I just, I did it myself. And I went to see the doctor. He, he prescribed a medication I took. Then he, after some weeks, I went back again to run the test myself again. I noticed the typhoid was high. It didn't reduce. And I still took another set of drugs, but this time around, they changed the drugs. Then after then, the symptoms still persisted. I went back again. The typhoid was still there. I told myself, this time around, I don't want to take drugs because I don't like drugs. Secondly, drugs are very strong. When you take them, they make you feel more sick. So I said I was going to take advantage of last month, which was the month of healing. Then I was ministering communion. Then the enemy was like, you know this thing, you're a microbiologist, you're just deceiving yourself. You know how these microorganisms work. But I settled down with the word, with the, there's this um, book written by Papa, Keys to Divine Health. And in Matthew and Isaiah, he said he took away our infirmities and he bore our sickness and we were made whole by his stripes. So on the 1st of October, I woke up earlier than used to. Then I agreed with God, telling him that I don't want to take this sickness into this month and he should perfect my health. Then I thank him for my health, though the symptoms still persisted. But yesterday I woke up earlier than before and I noticed there was no, typhoid was no there and I returned to the... Hallelujah. These are the wonderful acts of God in the midst of his people. In your seated position, wave your hands up to Jesus. Say, Father, we thank you. To you be all the glory and honor. Blessed be your name forevermore. In anticipation of your own testimony, put your hands again for Jesus. But a spiritual adventure. And that is why if you are not empowered by the spirit, you don't stand a chance to win. And it is your winning that brings you into the fullness of God's plan and purpose for your life. If you are not a winner, you may not see God's plan come to pass. The plan may look colorful, look sweet, look glorious. You might have even seen it in the dream, but you need the help of the Spirit, the empowerment of the Spirit for you to win. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, Scripture told us, I think verse 24, I have given into the hands see on the armor, right? king of Hishbon and his land, he said, begin to contend with him in battle and do what? Possess it. If he has given, why do you need to contend? Meaning there is a contention waiting for everyone. There is a fight you must never run away from. So winning that battle is only possible by the help of the Holy Ghost. That's why every time we embrace the Holy Ghost, 
every time we get ourselves addicted to fellowship with him, it begins to unveil to us different operations of the spirit. The operations of the spirit, they are very, they are very unique and very different. One method cannot work for another battle. That's why he keeps revealing to us different strategy, different operations. Different strategy, different operation. Just like the other time, David said, shall I go? Will I pursue? Will I overtake? He said, pursue. For you shall surely overtake them and without fail, recover all. The other time he inquired, shall I pursue? They said, no, this time don't pursue. This time does not require what? Pursuing. He said, this time around, bring the Levites, let them sing. As they begin to sing, I'll begin to lay ambushment against them, one by one. What a funny strategy. So one strategy can give you a victory today. Another time God said, no, don't use this strategy. That's why we must continually engage the Holy Ghost the revealer of the deep things of the spirit. And Apostle Paul said <laughs> that the intent, that by this intent, we might teach principalities and powers the many-sided, complicated structure, wisdom of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Many-sided, complicated it will be showing you different dimensions, different strategy, different approach to establish your victory. And I've discovered that people that truly follow God, follow the ways of God, they don't struggle to win. The reason why they don't struggle to win, He will always reveal the secret. That will make for the winning every time you are confronted. Even as I speak now, no matter what you are confronted with, there is something the Holy Ghost will show you that will make you win. I believe this month you will win. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say it better amen. Yeah. One strategy and one thing that we need to lay hold on. To make winning a reality is the spirit of love. Say with me, the spirit of love. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Let's read. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God had not given us the spirit of fear. Has he given you the spirit of fear? A fearful man can never win. In fact, before the battle takes place, he's already defeated. Fear announces your failure even before the battle starts. Fear announces your defeat even before the battle starts. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hear this? Love is not a feeling. Love is a spirit. Love is not a feeling. What you call a feeling is an expression given by the spirit. You can't carry the spirit of love and end up defeated in battle. Do you know why? God is love, not like love. You don't feel God. You live in God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? We don't feel God though. We live in God. Because Christ is in you. Is Christ in you? 
Jesus Christ is the expression of the love of God in us. That's why scripture says, if a man be in Christ. Are you in Christ? Are you sure? If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So what Jesus deposited in us is the spirit of love. No wonder Apostle Paul said that the love of God has been shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. If you have it, you have it. If you don't have it, you don't have it. And funny enough, it's not something you will fake. If you fake it, it will show. The love of God never allows us to be defeated. When the spirit of love is at work in you, there is a victory that is guaranteed. I want to assure you, you will win. Yeah. I say you will win. Yeah. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So what I'm seeing around you now is victory. I'm seeing victory all around you. No matter the challenges around you, all of them will collapse one by one. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. Scripture also confirmed it. Whatsoever is born of God, overcome it. Overcome it what? So what will stop you is not even in love here. I say what will stop you is not even in love here. Whatsoever is born of God, if you are born of God, you are born of the seed of the love of God. So, it makes it difficult for you to be defeated. It makes it difficult for you to be cast down. It makes it difficult for you to be leveled to the floor. You are a certified winner. You better say a good amen. So, to dwell in love is to dwell in God. Dwelling in love. Jesus said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, he said, I am my father. If you abide in me and abide in you, he said, I am my father who will come and make ourselves manifest in thee. Dwelling in love is dwelling in God. What does it mean to dwell? To dwell means... This is your residence. Your permanent abode. Not that you are here today, you change. Are you around know saying now? Just like some, some people say that they are in love. They are in love this month. Too. The next month, they are in love with another person. What happened now? I'm not in love with you again, bro. I'm in love with another person. The next month again, oh, they are in love with another person. When the condition is not favorable to what they want, or when the person is not dancing to that, I'm not in love with you again, bro. I'm in love with another person. To dwell means to settle. That's where you have settled. The psalmist said, he that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide. If you dwell, you will abide. If you dwell. One of the proof that you are dwelling is your in abiding. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You can dwell and not abide. To abide means no circumstance can change my mind. To abide means I remain solely yours. 
He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And the more you dwell, the more you are empowered. Now, let me tell you something. There is something mysterious about dwelling. The longer you dwell with a person, the more you understand his strategy. The more you tap into his secrets. You don't know someone casually and know what he does. No! You only know him in the surface. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Job said, I've got acquaint now thyself and be at peace with him. Thereby, good shall come unto thee. There are different levels of acquaintance. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's just like a, someone can see our flyers and say, it is not pastor. So I know you now, I'm seeing. Anytime I go there, I see him, I see him. There is another pastor that say, die by fire. That's his own level of knowing. True of us. There are other sets that will know me to another level. True of us. Some members can know me to a level. Some pastors can also know me to a level. But there is another person that knows me to another level. That's my wife. True of us. None of you here can know me to the level she has known me. Am I correct? So no matter the jargon anybody blows around, there's one that knows me and knows the truth. True of us. There is another level of knowing. The level to which all of you here know me cannot be equal to how Bishop Abue, Pastor Jeme, or Papa knows me. True of us. There are different levels of knowing. Knowing is in level. Why? Because the more you dwell, you grow in intimacy. Dwelling increases intimacy. What establishes intimacy in f is fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with you. The Holy Ghost is the transmitter of the love of God into our life. So there is no way we can walk in the fullness of the love of God if we are not in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Dwell. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. Another thing dwelling can do to an individual, it brings about a transmission of nature. Check it. People you dwell with, you quickly copy their traits. Pity enough is a gossiper. Oh my father. You become the CNN of LFC Lafia. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's why they say, show me your friend. Eh? Tell me who you are is small. I will tell you where you will be in the next five years. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Do you know that if people see who you company with every time, they are likely to predict who you are? They don't need any definition. Let them see who you are company with, who you are always dwelling with, who you are always talking with. You are a reflection of who you are always talking with. Take it or leave it. You are a reflection of who you are always talking with. You can't dwell with God and not get an impartation of the nature of God. You can't dwell with God or an individual or a godly person and his nature not being imparted to you. If the person has zeal, you will be fired up with zeal. If the person has passion for prayer, man, your prayer appetite will rise. If the person has passion for the word, man, something will jack up on you. It's not normal. No relationship leaves you at the same spot. You either rise by the relationship or you crash by the relationship. He that dwells. He that dwells. You can't dwell with someone that has passion for success 
and be, and be thinking of failure. Now lie, failure will die. Failure will die. It will die a natural death. Why? Because the person you are dwelling with hates failure. How much more dwelling in love with God? David said, my love and my affection is set towards the house of my God. My love and my affection is set towards the house of my God. So when you are dwelling in love, you are not only dwelling in God, your affection towards the house of God is on fire. No wonder the psalmist said, I was glad when they say, come, let us go to the house of God. A day I spend in your court is more than a thousand years outside. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. So dwelling in love is increasing in affection towards the house of God. Dwelling in love is increasing in affection towards the advancement of the house of God. Dwelling in love is having a passion to see someone's life transformed. Dwelling in love is being, being, being energized to make sure that someone is blessed through you. There are many in church. Since you came to this church, how many lives have you affected? Please, when you go, do an appraisal of yourself. Since you came to church, who have you affected positively? Or who have you brought down? Or who have you used your mouth to tear? That will let you know whether you are dwelling in love or you are dwelling in carnality. You can't be dwelling in love and not be thinking of who will rise through you. Well, what many come to do, their old nature has overtaken them. They are in the gang of the people that are plotting who we fall. But you know what? The more you plot down somebody's fall, you don't stand a chance to rise. Even the natural earth forbids you to rise. Anytime you make an adventure to rise, here you say, Nala, you, you day here with me. You day here. This is your permanent chair. You're not going anywhere. I, I'm sure I've told you the law of crabology. How many of you remember the law of crabology? You can't remember? Let me remind you. Who has seen crap before? Crap. You have seen crap? When you put them in a basket, not basin, there will be attempts by one or two to see how they will climb out of the basket. Anytime one is making an attempt to climb out of the basket, the other one will use his teeth. Come back here, Nami and Yude here. That's the law of crabology. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You can't claim to be working. How many have you affected? I repeat this. You will be remembered for two things. The good you contributed or the evil you added. You won't be remembered for any other thing. Just these two. Either the good you contributed or the evil you added. What are you adding to people's life? Shabi, you say you are dwelling in, in love is not dwelling in church. Please don't mistake the two. The fact that you are in church does not mean that you are dwelling in love. Church is only a platform for transformation. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's a platform for transformation. So who have you affected? In fact, from January till now, how many persons have you added smile to their face? Now 
How many have you been moved to pray for? How many have you been moved to reach out to rescue? Dwelling in God. That shows the spirit that is in you. Because whatever any man is doing is a manifestation of the spirit that is at work in him. So even as you are seated now, which spirit is in you? You came to confirm the tearing that you are programmed to do this month? How many, please, we, we must ask ourselves this question. How many have we affected positively? That's a sign that you are walking in love. Not how many you have cast down. Not how many you have used your mouth to tear. Not how many you are sitting where they are ganging up on planning how they will wound the person. How many have you affected? Who has cried because of you or who has laughed because of you? You are not dwelling in God because you are in church. You are dwelling in God because the spirit of God dwells in you. That's why scripture says, Christ in you. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. When David missed it, he said, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. In another place in Ezekiel, he said, I will take away the heart of flesh. <laughs> I will take away the heart of stone and put in them a right spirit. The right spirit. The right spirit. So dwelling in God helps us to increase in the nature of God. You hear me? This nature can be at work in you and you end up a failure. It's not possible. And as you are growing in this nature, you are growing in the fullness of God. Walking in love is a process. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's why you are not perfect. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are not perfect. It's a process. It's a process. You grow as you walk in the process. You keep growing as the process is on. You keep growing. You keep growing. As you are growing, that's how all the nature that makes God, God, becomes reflective in you. Grace is at work in you. Goodness is at work in you. Mercy is at work in you. Every nature of God begins to find expression. Begin to find expression in our individual life. And by so doing, we become empowered to win everywhere we step in. Hear me? There are people you can plan for, for them to fail. But it's like the more you are planning for them to fail, the more they are winning. You two, you'll be wondering, how come all the things I'm doing, nothing is working. It can't work, it's growing in the nature. Why you, you are increasing in the other nature. Whichever nature you walk in, now, let me tell you, life is very simple. You know whether you will fail in an exam, whether you will pass in an exam. Am I saying the truth? You don't just enter an exam and say, be like, I go fail. It's a lie. You, you will know whether you will fail and you also know whether you will pass. So growing in the nature of love is your principal assignment. That's why scripture says, draw near unto me, and I will do what? Draw near unto you. The more you draw near, the more something is entering. So every one of us, we need the spirit of love to sustain us in the love of God. We need the spirit of love. 
Why do we need the spirit of love to sustain us in the love of God? Hear me? You may suddenly go hungry. The fact that you eat now does not mean that you will not need food tomorrow. Am I saying the truth? The reason why you ate today is to sustain you today. And the reason why you will eat tomorrow is for you to be sustained tomorrow. That's why we need constant touch with the spirit of love to sustain us in the love of God. Because if we are not sustained and the love is gradually depleting, you move from walking in love to walking in witchcraft. You move from walking in love to walking in wickedness. You move from walking in love to walking like Satan. When Judas began to skip fellowship, do you know, do you know I read a little of Bible history. The problem of Judas started when he began to avoid fellowship with his master. There are two fellowships. You are either in the right fellowship or you are in the wrong fellowship. The moment he began to skip fellowship with his master, another fellowship was waiting for him. The enemy cannot catch you if you are not in their circle. The moment he began to skip fellowship, the wrong company was available for him. And from there, they began to induce him. Induce him. Induce him. Induce him until the thing entered him. He started manifesting. I want you to hear this. Growing in love guarantees you to remain on the path of winning. You keep remaining a winner. Addicted lovers are never defeated. The moment any issue rises up on their life, God shows up. If someone you are in love with is in a challenge, what will you do? All your muscle, all your energy will come alive. Even if you cannot confront or fight the people, you go and hire people that will fight it for you. Am I saying the truth? Every time we are growing in love, we are ensuring our path of victory. You will not fail again. Yeah. Whatever the enemy has been doing to take you out of love is only opening a door of failure for you. It's only opening a door of defeat for you. No wonder Paul said, <laughs> he said to the Galatian church, oh Galatians, who has bewitched you? Come back to your first love. Tell your neighbor, come back to your first love. Come back to your first love. Do you know what? When you first started, this was not your zeal. Your zeal was on fire. What has happened to that zeal? Take it back. You are taking back your zeal. <laughs> Jesus said, the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. When you are consumed with love, you go miles. You can do anything. Anyone that is in love does not check what he does. What fuels him is the love. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Lovers don't count cost. They see everything they do as a pleasure. Rise up to your feet. You won't lose again. Yeah. I say you won't lose again. Yeah. You can't be in love with God and he will allow your enemies to be defeating you. Lie, lie. It is not possible. When you are in love with God, he fights your battle. No one I say you shall not need to fight in this battle. For I, the Lord, will do what? Fight for you. God will fight for you. Yeah. This week, Entering this month, your enemies, they will go down for you. Yeah. You are going to pray, Lord, as I partake of this communion. Let the nature of your love fill my heart. Let this prayer come out from you right now. As I partake of this communion, let the nature of the love of God that flows through this communion gain expression in my life. Let the nature of God the love of God. Find expression in my life. Whatever wants to make me go canal. 
whatever want to deplete the love of God in my life. Oh Lord, by this communion, let there be a restoration. Let there be a restoration. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, let there be a restoration of the love of God in my heart. Fuel me afresh with your love, Jesus. Fuel me afresh with your love. Spirit of God, renew me in the love of God. Renew me in the love of God. Renew me in the love of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Wherever you have missed it, the mercy of God will answer for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. As you partake of this communion, any battle the enemy have packaged for you this month, I decree your victory established in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you partake of this communion, your enemy will go down this month. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. As you partake of this communion, you are taking your own portion of victory this month. Amen. Make that amen louder. Amen. Whatever has been programmed to hinder you from laying hold of your appointed blessing, that arrangement is scattered. Amen. That arrangement is scattered. Amen. You are not saying amen like a believer. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, confirm your word again. In Jesus' name.